here is my latest attempt at making a pipe out of an apple. So first things first, I'm gonna try to make a bowl piece up here where the uh, stem attaches to the top of the apple. I'm gonna cut a little circle around the stem, see if I can pop it out. Nope, doesn't work yet. There we go. Popped it on out. Now, you know, that's not quite deep enough. I need to go a little deeper, but I don't want to cut it much bigger than that. So that's why I got this stick here. This is just an apple branch that I got off the same tree. And I'm going to sharpen it a little bit right here. Oh my gosh. Right past the, a knot. Um, that's pretty good. Probably should have gotten a maple branch and use that. But try to make it smooth a little bit because you might have to jab it in a few little ways and you don't want to mess up your hole. Be gentle. I'm just scraping the bark off. You don't want to ruin your point. Anyway, that looks good. And I'm going to poke it down into the top a little bit. I'll have to use the knife a little bit for this part. That will, that stick will come in handy shortly. Just making it a little bit deeper, a little bit to this, like closer to the center of the apple. Cause that's about where we want to be. Now that we got there, I'm going to point my knife right around where I think it's going to go in and just do a little bit of that, just the tip of the knife in order to open it up. Oh, there, that worked perfectly. And if you can see, it goes right into the bowl piece. Works great, perfect little tiny pipe. Now, the only part left to do is to take your joint out and do not smoke it. You just add a little bit of it into, directly into the pipe. Or the apple, I should say. Because it is actually an apple. And yes, it's going to get wet. That is perfectly fine. That is called seasoning. You're adding flavor. You should not be afraid of flavor because that's the spice of life or something. I don't remember who said that. I think it was the Buddha or Gandhi or something, but. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. It's like a bong, <laughs> but better. It could taste like an apple. But... Mm. <coughs> <coughs> this is a really good knife. All you guys should get one. <coughs> it's a Mora. M-O-R-A. <coughs> Mora. It's a uh, Swedish. And you can see this one's very well used. A friend of mine gave this to me and he used this to make like a thousand fires or more. You know, he, he uh, does hand drilling. So he'll make his spindles and stuff with these knives. This is a very good tooling knife. Uh. I was able to expertly like control this, you know, like it's so easy to control. And I have never sharpened this in the last year that I've had it. He's get gave it to me. I don't use it like that often, but I do use it a bit and I have never had to sharpen it. And like, I'm pretty sure I can, uh, oh yeah, let me see. Does that work? Only a little bit. It's not razor sharp. But it's sharp enough to do what I just did. I mean, where'd my stick go? I don't know. Very easy to control. And the fact of the matter is, this is not the world's best knife. This is the world's best knife for like $30. This is like so cheap. All the Mora's knives are so cheap. And yet they're freaking amazing. It's full tang or whatever. It's got, you know, it goes at least all the way down to the end. So it's very sturdy. Uh, just like one of my favorite tools.
to use. And like, if I had to pick nothing else to take out of the woods with me, it would be this. Like, there's just no other one thing that I would pick, basically. Actually, if there was any one other thing that I would pick, it would be like a metal canteen, <laughs> you know, that I can boil water in. That would be slightly, probably even, I don't know. I'm not even sure if that would be more useful than this. This is almost more useful still, because I'm pretty sure I can find a random piece of glass out here. I found like three bottles already since I was out here today. So, I like these. That was, this is a sales representative for Mora Knife now. <laughs> Mora Knife. Uh, yeah, everybody always gets those big old knives, you know? And those are good for a lot of things, but the tips, they're so big, you know? You can't do little fine work with them and stuff. And look at the tip of this, you know? It's just a tiny, it's a utensil, you know? This is for real technical detailed work, which if you are manufacturing stuff for yourself in the woods, this is kind of what you need. You really need this. Like, it's a lot easier to make, like, uh, in another video. Oh, I didn't upload that here. I was like, in another video, I made a hook out of a hawthorn um, twig uh, that has a big old thorn on it, you know, and I use this. For some reason, if you had a, I think if you had a big old bowie knife, you know, it's just going to be a, a little bit harder to do fine tooling to make your fishing hooks, you know what I mean? Um, and you do more fine tooling out in the woods when you're doing, you know, crafting things. Then you then you are chopping stuff, and honestly, if I if I want a big chopper to chop stuff, I'm gonna get like a a machete, maybe a short machete. You know, I'd rather have like a short machete and then like a small knife. You know, big knives kind of just they're just like less than. I'd rather have a big old machete or what's those uh those tantos, those Japanese type. Those are nice. I'm not sure if that's even they. See, those are kind of for killing people, I think, more. But, um, yeah. Oh, I don't know if you guys can hear that big boom, but that's my freedom-loving neighbors over here. I like them. And the people on the other, everybody out here, dude. Everybody's just like, bang, 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 you know? All the time. I love it, dude. So awesome. And they got different guns. These guys are good. They must know how to shoot by now. You know what I mean? Because they're, they're getting their hours of practicing, so... Buy a more knife, smoke some weed, eat an apple, go out in the woods. That's an order. See you later.